So I was recently watching a video from one of my new subscribers where he was making a mallet. And I got to thinking, I've always wanted to make a mallet. I just never have. And I find myself using basically anything as a mallet. And most of the time it's a huge waste of my energy. Um, a lot of times I'm using like a three pound sledge, like a mini sledge. And sometimes I'm using hammers and sometimes I'm using just chunks of wood. So it was time. So materials I'm going to be using for this will be walnut, oak, and ash. And uh, it's a pretty fun project. I think it turned out really great. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. So what I'm doing here is getting all my materials ready. Um, this was a piece that was pretty, pretty checked um, from one side to another. And so that's the walnut. This is the oak. I think this oak is fantastic. Uh, super hard, super durable. It's going to be the middle of the mallet where most of the um, force is being experienced. Um, tough stuff. Uh, ash is going to be the handle and it's going to have some walnut on each side of it. And yeah, so I'm putting everything through the table saw and getting it to about the same size, which is around three inches. And then after that, everything's going to go through the planer to get it down to size. I know not everybody has a planer, but man, I would highly recommend one. Um, they're a pretty awesome tool. If you can get yourself some rough cut wood for cheaper, you can make it what you want to make it. And uh, it's just, it's a pretty awesome experience. Here you can see I'm using the uh, fancy pushy cat push stick. If you haven't seen that video, maybe subscribe to my channel and take a peek. That was a fun build, completed like last week. It's already coming in handy. One thing I've noticed about this ash wood is that it does tend to burn. And so one thing that I do is I try to keep everything a little um, bigger than I want it to be. And then at the last step, then I just dial it in just a little bit more and try to cut off most of that burn. It would probably work better if I didn't stall or slow down so much, but that's uh, one of those things that I'm still working on. And so here you can kind of see how I'm mocking up the handle. It's going to be sandwiched there. The ash is going to be sandwiched by the walnut. I was thinking that the oak was going to be on the outside and that the walnut was going to be on the inside. And then I saw I had this other piece of ash sitting there. And I was like, it'd be pretty cool if I had three colors here. Because uh, it's kind of like a really light, medium, and then dark kind of thing. And so I don't have a bandsaw, so I'm doing some resawing using my table saw. And uh, yeah, it's a process I've done several times. You do lose, you know, the kerf, um, but without other tools, this is kind of the best I can do. And so I just take a cut on each side. I make sure I flip it end over end, um, just in case it's not perfectly in the center. And then, you know, as soon as I get it through, raise the blade a little bit, um, start being careful as you get that thing up higher and higher maybe start using a push stick just to make sure your fingers are staying plenty out of the way and when you look at from this angle you can tell like how far away i still was but it's kind of hard to tell and it's better to keep your fingers i think um, than to make mistakes uh, just by being hasty So now that everything is down to size, uh, I realize that the walnut is too thick at this point. Uh, this hammer would be ridiculously wide and the proportions don't feel right to me. So I'm going to resaw one of the pieces of walnut and then keep the other for maybe another hammer. I actually have uh, twice as much materials as I needed so I can actually make a second hammer. And so if anybody's interested in one of these hammers, just got to let me know. We could figure something out. 
maybe like uh, one million dollars cash, cash money. And it is clamp time. And so we're using my 50 inch Bessie clamps to go ahead and glue up something that is probably less than five inches wide. No, it doesn't make the most sense, but uh, I bought the biggest clamps I could so that I could clamp up something really big if I needed to. And uh, sometimes the job is small, sometimes the job is big, but Bessie don't care. She's gonna clamp it up regardless. Whether those pieces wanna be together or not, they're going together, because Bessie says so. So after everything comes out of the clamps, it's just time to square everything up. The glue up went pretty well, but not perfect. I didn't do a great job of making sure the ends were um, perfectly the same and the, the pieces weren't exactly 100% the same to begin with. And so again, I'm, I'm using my saw here. Uh, I've got the rigid saw that's able to move back and forth and Again, I, I don't think that it's probably recommended to use it this way, but it does a great job of creating square stock. Um, as long as you go real slow, take your time, and just back and forth, just dial it in a little bit each time. Um, having that back sacrificial piece there, make sure it's square to the fence. Um, always check your square beforehand. Um, if you do those things, for the most part, it turns out really well. And so at this point, I'm going to be chamfering the edges using a 45 degree chamfer. Uh, I'm going to do this to all the edges of the head. <clears throat> and I really was going for a Thor's hammer kind of vibe. And I think this just does the trick. It makes it look just the way that I want it to look. Um, everything's looking pretty good on this. And you can see I've got everything marked out for mortising um, on the on the hammer head. But this part looks great and worked out pretty nicely. And now for everybody's favorite part, sanding. Uh, you can actually tell I get tired during this process because I start using like my elbow to hold it down instead. <laughs> I am getting soft. It's time to toughen up. So more sanding should make me tougher. And here's where the wheels fall off. So I didn't really do any research on this. I've seen what these look like. I think I watched a video once or twice before and I just thought I'm going to use hand tools and some other stuff and I'm going to mortise that thing out. And it was a nightmare. Uh, my chisels aren't sharp enough. I'm not good at sharpening chisels. Uh, I break out my router. I do the best I can with my uh, discount. Um, chisels that I work with. I use my router until my bit breaks uh, and that's you know the router is actually working really well <clears throat> but I still have to make it through this uh, I think it's like three inches tall uh, maybe four and so I get this side about as good as I can and I think I break the router bit on the other side I am, you know, marking out my edges so that way cutout doesn't happen or tear out doesn't happen uh, when using the bit. But yeah, I end up breaking my, my bit and so I'm not able to get as deep there which causes me to have to use more hand tools and uh, I, j I just get to the point where it's not going in like square. I should have used like a block with it to maintain that edge. And it just doesn't work right. I watched uh, some other people's videos. A couple friends of mine have some. I should have watched theirs first. Just didn't know that they made one. And in theirs, they actually made the block with the hole in it to begin with. That way they knew it was going to be straight up and down and exactly the way that they wanted it. But this was a toil. Um, it was total labor. 
it wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be for this part. And it was super frustrating when the actual handle doesn't fit, which you'll see here in a minute. So after several hours of petting goats, because I was sad, uh, it was time to start over. Didn't have another piece of ash, but the piece of walnut that I was using to try to beat the other piece in seemed to be pretty effective. So I decided it had earned its handle status and decided to use it. Here's another mistake I made right here. Um, probably should have used a pull saw instead. I couldn't find it. This is why I need to do more organization stuff in my shop, because I have one and I found it later. but. It is what it is. So I'm just rounding over some edges here just to get a better fit in my hand. Originally, I had thought of actually indexing my fingers into the grip, but that would have made it to where I could only use it in one way. And I want to be able to use both sides of the head. Now you can see I actually get a fit. It's not as tight as I would like, um, but it's not as bad as it was in the last scene that you saw where I was struggling terribly. So you can see why I really wish that I'd used a pull saw instead. That cut is not straight down the middle. It kind of wavered off to the side. But after adding this last piece here, things spread out pretty well. Uh, the fit is good. It, it is tight. It will not move. And so uh, that part turned out well, even though it might not look the best. Uh, I sanded flush with the top of the mallet. And then uh, the only step that I really have left here is some finished sanding, which I kind of avoided most of that for the video. And then I'm going to be adding just a little bit of uh, tongue oil varnish to this for some protection. This is something that'll probably get beat up at some point. I will use it. It's it's not just gonna be like a trophy or something like that. If I make something, I, I use it, I'll abuse it. And then if it breaks, I'll, I'll just make another one. It's not a big deal. So if you've made it this far into the video, you've either fallen asleep, left the room, or you enjoyed the content. In any case, please subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you.